in coming 30 years, if a young researcher like me is to get a Nobel Prize for, what do you think it would be? It would be for something that you're passionate for. Each year at the Lindau meetings in Germany, young researchers come together to learn from Nobel Prize winners as well as from each other. I work with tiny marine organisms and look at how fluid flow affects their dynamics. It's fascinating to see how things at such tiny scales can have such global climatic implications. I went to cure malaria and to do this we need early detection methods and this is an assay I'm trying to develop currently. But there's much more to the meetings in Lindau than seeking scientific collaboration. They also inspire discussion about wider questions in science. The use of genetically modified organisms in food production has been the source of many communication problems for scientists, according to one Nobel laureate. Uh, one problem is, is food and, and having enough food. There was a, a lecture this morning uh, about, yeah. about GMO, how uh, uh, GMO sh should be used and should not be thwarted in terms of being able to provide rice that's far more uh, uh, nutritious to people in Africa, for example. And that, that, that really could have an impact. He used golden rice as an example where they just engineered this rice to have beta carotene in the grain of the rice. There were documented evidence that the amount of this golden rice that you need to take care of children at an early age for especially vitamin A deficiency, uh, this, it was proposed that it's something like over some kilograms of them you need to yeah take care of it but yeah but it, that was a stupid lie but that but wasn't, yeah wasn't exactly yeah. but yeah. as a matter of fact no. it's just what few hundred grams 150 yeah. grams it's that you need so, so it's less of, than what they're already exactly eating. so there is a very conscious effort to really misguide oh. people so yeah. So what about GMOs in Europe? Because they're they're banned. I mean, in the U.S. we have so many GMOs. And this everywhere. makes me angry so like, because what? it makes people fearful of exactly. them. Exactly. And there is nothing to be message? fearful about. So. If you ask the general public, do you want GMOs in your food? <laughs> yeah. They'll say no. But if or you do say, you want antibiotics in your food? Yeah. But if you say what's a GMO, they'll be like, um, green magical. <laughs> <laughs> Something that needs to be labeled. Because yeah. It's not safe. Yeah. That, <laughs> so this is what happens when politics get mixed up it. in the. Yeah. In but science. then maybe this needs to be ingrained even from an early stage, say at school level, that okay, these are alternative so that people need to be educated about. See, I think it's our job as scientists to do that. Scientists themselves ought to work to be able to explain their work in an understandable way to a broad audience. And we also rely on the other media, etc., cetera, to, uh, to publicize work. Uh, but there's, there's some concerns about that. Much of the media today uh, give equal, equal time to a very valid scientific approach that's been validated and is correct 99% of the time. Mm -hmm. They give equal time to that and also to some things that are completely uh, uh, at odds with okay. the consensus of science. Yeah. Many people all over the world now and in the United States, um, for example, don't believe in fluoridation, even though it's good, uh, are worried about vaccines, even though they save lives, uh, don't believe in climate change, even though it's basically happening, and so on. And, and we have to ask ourselves, why do people have these different points of view? And we, we have a challenge to, to explain that properly. We have to keep putting it out there. That's why I tweet. I tweet so that my information about that things like this are safe is going into the public Definitely. domain. And eventually, if enough scientists do that, then... Yeah. I think that there needs to be more scientists that are vocal about like their research, other people's research, yeah. just you know, talking about... Should this be like science. a main career? Maybe, see, I don't think it should be a whole career, though. <laughs> no, like, I, like I, how, you know, there's some scientists that are no, editors of papers or something. Like, this should actually be a profession. You're a scientist, but all you do is PR work and you... But, but I don't, I don't think hard. you should but, but separate. That's another aspect I, I don't of think science, we should have say. communicators and scientists. No. I think no, we should have scientists, scientists who, who are communicators. Lindau is not an ivory tower. On the contrary, Lindau is paving the way to show how science can be communicated for a general benefit and well-being for the society. I think we had some very interesting discussions about how a mutual interaction can do a lot better to the society than what we are actually doing now. It's extremely beneficial when we can apply this to society, right? Just getting lab results and keeping them published on a paper or something doesn't really benefit the community as a whole. And so it's much better if we're able to communicate what our findings mean and its implications on society.
beautiful baobab tree, or tree of life, is an African icon. The baobab fruit contains four times the potassium of banana, three times the vitamin C of an orange, and twice the calcium of spinach. But the baobab is an orphan. Science has paid little attention to this tree until now. The African Orphan Crops Consortium is harnessing the power of genetics for orphan crops. The baobab tree is the first of 101 plants to have its genome sequenced, assembled, and annotated. And the information will be made available to all unrestricted. Where millions of people are malnourished, this genetic data will help farmers provide the food they need. The genomes will guide African plant breeders so they can create crops that are higher yielding, water and nutrient use efficient, resilient to climate change, and full of nutrition, triggering a huge leap forward for the diversity and sustainability of the continent's agriculture.